In the last video, we created a basic skeleton for the uh, editor. And uh, this time, we're going to uh, look at this uh, viewport or the scene and make it uh, more similar to Visio. So we want to be able to zoom in and out and uh, use uh, scrolling, uh, native scroll functionality. And we may look into if the browser window was changed. We want to similar functionality to keep it and keep the scroll bars in the center. And maybe if there's time, we can do like a zoom to fit window. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to make is this zoom component over here. And what's interesting is that it goes from 10% to 400% and 100% is in the middle, so it's not linear. And sliders is not something that I use very often, so I had to go into the documentation and search for slider. And then you can see it's in the element input. Uh, and, and when you click it, you get a nice example how to use it. But what I normally do, I just uh, put in the code and the compiler tells me uh, what I need to fill in. Now in the status bar, there's only this text. And I'm just going to put in a, an explain debug dot to do thing here so that we can see what we're doing. And I want something uh, like a zoom component here. And I want it to align right. And that zoom component, let's create that one. Uh, that should be input dot slider with uh, no parameters and just an empty record. And then Elm should tell me what is missing. So here we need a. Yeah, I can just type it. So label equals input dot label hidden. I don't want one. And that could say zoom slider. And we need a max value and we want 400, min value equals 10%. And on change, uh, let's just make something that takes the value and triggers the no op message. That's the only one we have for now. And then step, let's do just 1% for each. And thumb, let's use input dot default thumb yeah and value equals 100 percent so then we should get something on screen and it's really really tiny over here so maybe we can set it to something like 400 pixels wide okay that's maybe a, a bit large but yeah let's try that uh, so then we may not need this explain anymore. And what we can see in Visio, there is like a uh, something behind the scroll thing. So what you can actually do in Elm UI, you can say behind content. And we can put in like an element with a background color of i don't know rgb 0.5 some gray color i don't know let's see what happens and then that doesn't have any size yet so let's make it with fill and height i guess it's only one pixel yeah and we need to center it center y so then we have something along those lines i guess it's a, a bit lighter we should probably create a palette with some colors very soon but okay then we have more or less the scroll bar thing so let's create the minus and plus buttons and maybe the the value of the zoom so we can see it so i'm going to refactor a little bit here so say that this, uh, instead of element, this can be a row. And inside this row, let's uh, put this uh, zoom slider 
to its own thing. So it uh, looks a bit more tidy. Zoom slider. So before the slider, we should have something like a text minus. And after the slider, text plus. And then after that, uh, we need a value. Let's just see, uh, see how this works first. So the row needs some spacing. I don't know, four. So if we want to make this uh, actually work, we will need some zoom value. So if we say um, zoom level, let's call it that. That doesn't exist yet, and we need to get it from somewhere. And uh, of course, I can just save her, and uh, and uh, Elm will tell me what I need. So this zoom slider needs to pass that one. Zoom level. You can, you can go. Uh, you can start on the top or, the, or in the bottom. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. So zoom level. And I guess this one actually has it. Model dot zoom level. But that doesn't exist yet. So if we go to the model here, we can say zoom level equal. Uh, is of type float and the initial value zoom level equals one. I want to use uh, a value one is 100% and 0 0.5 is 50%. Uh, so, and we also need a message here for when we drag this uh, slider. So zoom slider changed and that will give us a float. And in the update now, there is we don't handle any messages. We just give back the original model all the time. So we need to case message off. And uh, we can say, yeah, let's do the no op first. And then zoom slider changed. We will get a value here. And we can update the model. So model zoom level equals well divided by 100. And uh, none, so that we get a the correct. Uh, and I guess it doesn't work yet because we need to send that message. So in the zoom slider, we can now change this to zoom slider changed. And then I guess when we drag here, we should see something. Uh, let's add the zoom value here. So let's do the zoom level times 100 and we can string dot from float and we can put that into a text element and then we see here is we get a, this huge number that we don't want so let's just round this Uh, round zoom level times a hundred and then it's actually a string from int then we get a nice round value uh, and I guess the value here also needs to be multiplied by a hundred that's why it didn't work so now it should work 10 to 400 but we we still don't have a hundred percent in the middle then we need to do some uh, special mapping in the update function but uh, this is enough to make it work for uh, what we're going to do to this window uh, and that is scaling and scrolling so to scale this one this uh, ugly aqua thing here now this is here we just need to add scale and then zoom level and that doesn't exist here so zoom level and then scene, where is that used? Yeah. Zoom level, we need zoom level here. And then main content model dot zoom level. Then we should have something that scales there. But there is a problem when, when we uh, zoom out, there is 
some gray area on the left but not on the right and also on the top and uh, also if I go into this content and I put uh, something in center here so let's uh, create an element here and this should be a text should be centered So that should render in the center here, but and and, I, and it probably does if we zoom out like this, but it doesn't. It's it's not in the center of the scroll bars when we zoom in here. When I center here, it it doesn't show me that text that I would expect. And this happens because scaling happens from the center of the element. But if we change the origin to top left, then we should get more, uh, more or less what we want. So you cannot do that directly in, in LMUI, but uh, if you need something from CSS, you can use that uh, in LMUI. And then I can show you how you do that. So HTML attribute that converts HTML attributes to LMUI attributes. Uh, so then we can say, HTML attributes dot style, and we can say transform origin to top left. And I guess I haven't imported that, so import HTML dot attributes as H A. And then I guess if I zoom out, we don't get this gray stuff on the side, the scroll bars behave more or less properly and if I zoom uh, far in and go to the center we actually find the centered item but another problem we have now this looks uh, really great when we are zoomed uh, all the way in but if we zoom out further than the, the size we we would want this to be centered so then we need to know some way if the scene or what we are rendering is smaller than the viewport that we can see here. So to keep track of this and, and have full control of all this viewport so that we can control the scroll bars and know if the scene is smaller than the viewport. I think I think the best way to model this is to use the browser DOM and the viewport. And, and this viewport is exactly what we want. You see that there is a scene which is a lot bigger than what we can see. Uh, so this is the scene. And the viewport tells us where the X and the Y position of this viewable window or content and the size of it. So let's try to use that. So we can import browser.dom as DOM. And in our model, we can say that we want the viewport, and that should be dom.viewport. It, it, this is it's actually pretty nice. It, this is a native DOM viewport, and that's exactly what we want, so that scroll bars and everything works properly the native way. So the only thing that is a bit weird is that we need to initialize this with some values in the start. So let's just copy this thing here and paste. Then we can take all these colons and say equals, and we can do set all the values to zero. So then it should uh, compile, and we have a viewport in our model. So to be able to get and set scroll bars and get uh, talk about this viewport in the DOM. Uh, we need to give it an ID. I'm gonna make it as a variable since we are going to use it multiple times. So let's just uh, the ID should be viewport, and then we need to set this ID on uh, where is our on the the this window that has the scroll bars. So let's give it HTML attribute. And then hi.id and you 
default ID. So that should uh, compile and we should now have, have an ID of viewport uh, in this window. And then we can maybe, uh, when we start the program, we, we can read in the viewport. So uh, this instead of command on none, we can say refresh viewport. And I, I'm going to extract this out since we're going to use it, use it uh, multiple times. So refresh viewport uh, equals, that's a task. Uh, and then we need to import task. So we're going to task attempt and uh, the message should be viewport result. And we're gonna do dom dot get viewport off viewport id. Uh, this is command message, and viewport result doesn't exist, so let's create that message, and that should actually be uh, what's the type of that? That's uh result of dom error or we get the dom viewport and then we need to handle this in our update so that is simply viewport result result so case result of okay viewport then we're going to do model viewport equals viewport and then if it's an arrow it should never fail uh, so we're gonna give model cmd dot none it needs to be capital so something wrong yeah it should be an arrow so now if we look in in here it, it actually read the viewport we can see it's the scene is uh, 2000 by 1200 and the viewport height width uh, it ha also has a size and the scroll bars is at the top left but one problem now is if we resize the the window there is nothing to update uh, this viewport it's now smaller than this so we need to subscribe for uh, window resize and refresh this uh, viewport. So the way we do that, we need to hook up uh, some subscriptions uh, in the main here. So we can say subscriptions, just extract that. Equals, and that actually gets the model. And we can say, Browser.events.on resize, and then we can say give it a name browser resized, uh, and that's a message that we need to create. So browser resized, and I think that's I think that gives us int int. Let's try and save, and it says we need to handle this in the update. So browser resized, and we actually don't care about the size of the window for now. Uh, so we're just going to return model, and we're going to refresh viewport. So now if I save and I move this around, you see a lot of messages is uh, created down here. And and it actually updates now when I when I uh, change the size of the window. And I think it also handles if I zoom here. Uh, these scroll bars and everything changes, so it also updates and keeps. We have 100% control of this viewport. And I guess the next issue is when we scroll here, we need to know. The position but that doesn't update so we need to create something that listens for scrolls 
and uh, and updates our viewport so that we have full control. So if we go into Elm UI, there is nothing called on scroll. If I go here and search for scroll, there is there is no event for on scroll. So what we need to do is use the HTML events, but I don't think this this doesn't have scroll either. So then we need to use event custom or something where we can listen for whatever and create our own uh, our own event handler. So if we just I'll just put it down here for now. So we're going to say on scroll that should be a message to attribute message that's uh, um, LMUI attribute message on scroll uh, we're going to get the message that we give to the event and we can uh, first create this as uh, convert it from HTML to LMUI element attributes so HTML attribute and we're going to say HTML event dot custom scroll and um, the decoder should be d dot succeed and uh, message when it succeeds should be message and we want prevent default false but we want to stop propagation true like that uh, so I cannot type out. So I guess we ha don't have uh, JSON decode installed and we have not imported HTML e elements. Import HTML dot events as HE and import JSON dot decode as D. And JSON decode is not installed, so let's Elm install Elm JSON. Yep. So now it should compile, I guess. And we can this scene thing. Uh, when we scroll now, we need to add on scroll. We can say viewport scrolled, but we don't need to know. Uh, anything else because we're just gonna when this message happens we're gonna refresh the viewport so viewport scroll we need to handle that here that, that's actually the same as this one so just gonna copy it so now if we open this and we start scrolling around you can see that uh, we have full control of the scroll bars here and also when we resize the whole thing. So now we have full control of our viewport at, at any time. I just noticed a big issue with uh, the whole viewport and scene uh, thing, because you see the initial width here is 2000. And if I um, zoom here and make it uh, so that it takes less space than what's available, it will actually start modifying our scene and that's not something we want and it, I, it seems to be the scaling actually scales down uh, so that it takes up less space uh, so uh, when I go back here now and zoom back up it, we, the scene is no longer 2000 and that's really bad so that means we cannot use the scene from the viewport we need to create our own scene so in model I'm gonna do scene equals with zero height zero and we need to add a type as well scene uh, with float height float uh, have I not typed correctly Of course, it, it has to be inside the model. And then we can 
on start we can do this only once and we can instead of viewport result we can say initial viewport result and we need to create a message for that and we need to handle it uh, let's have it here so then we want to set the viewport that's okay but we also want to set the scene should be equal to the current uh, size the available space so we will do viewport dot viewport dot Ah, okay, we need to actually set it here. Width equals width and height equals part of dot height. So when we, yeah, we don't use these values for anything, but but now uh, when uh, the program initializes, it will first get the available size here and it will create uh, a scene which is the, uh, takes up the full space uh, but we actually want some uh, just like visio we want some area outside our scene so let's uh, add that i guess we can call it uh, scene padding and I think we will do uh, one and a half times the, the size. So then we need to make this uh, smaller. So we divide it by scene padding. So it's a little bit smaller. So now we can start using that in our view code. So instead of model zoom level, I'm just gonna pass down the whole model. So zoom level here, we can change this a couple of places to model. And I guess in scene, we have to do model.zoom level and it should compile. And then uh, this scrollable area, of course, should take the whole space like it does. But inside here, I guess I want an element, uh, which is the gray area like in visio so we're gonna have width pixels and we're gonna round uh, model dot scene dot width times the pa scene padding and the same for height height should be pixels and we're gonna round model dot scene dot height times scene padding width and then we can create our um, element here which is the actual scene the drawing area and we should uh, probably have the same thing, I guess. And uh, maybe we can create a color on that one so we can see it. Background color is uh, RGB 111, so it's white. Uh, and this this is the content, so I guess it should be a little bit smaller. And this white thing is actually what we are going to scale. So let's move that up there and we can center this content. So that looks better. And we still get it in center, I guess. If we center, that's great. But there is still an issue when we, when this is smaller than the, when there is no scroll bars, we want it to be centered and not like this. 
So then to calculate this, we need uh, to know the, the scrollable width here. So let's extract that out and say scrollable width. Let's create that uh, in a let block here. So scrollable width equals this thing should compile and then we can say scrollable height same thing scroll height equals this thing and then down here uh, this uh, white thing we can say move right and then it should be the scrollable width divided by two so that we move it from the left to the center and then uh, minus half of this width so minus the model dot scene uh, times model dot zoom level divided by two the width of the scene. So then it, it should center and we can do the same thing for move down and we say height should be height. So then it, it should center here and when we zoom in it's here is an issue. It's not in the center but when we zoom out now, this looks okay. And let's have a look at this one. So this looks okay, but it, this yellow should not go outside this area. Why am I scrolling here? And I should, should see the yellow thing in all corners here, so something is is uh, definitely wrong. So I, I think to make it behave properly we need to add the zoom level here. Model.zoom level So then we have the correct size of the scrollable width and then when we zoom in I think it should center and we see these yellow lines correctly but it, it still doesn't center uh, properly and that is because this one should always fill the screen so what we can do is say uh, we should have maximum uh, I don't know it should be model dot viewport dot viewport dot width times scene padding. So that should be the minimum size of this yellow thing. It should be a little bit bigger than the available uh, viewport width. And then it looks better than when we center, even if it's smaller, it looks correct. And we can scroll a little bit onto the sides, just like in Visio. So let's do the same thing here. We can say maximum of model.viewport.viewport.height. Uh, and, uh, and we want some extra, so we add this uh, scene padding. Now I think it behaves exactly like we want it to. So now when we center these scroll bars, everything is in center. We can move it to the sides. And when we zoom in, we are still center center and we can show some stuff outside the drawing area or the, the scene. So now that we have uh, full control uh, over this thing, we can create like a fit to view button uh, so if we go to the status bar uh, we have the zoom component 
and uh, we can make something here like a text fit. Yeah, I'm not going to make something that looks <laughs> good for now, but let's do padding 4 and like a border rounded 4 and maybe border dot width 1. Let's see how that looks like. So then we get something that looks like a button. And we can add a point so that we get this uh, nice hand when we hover it and we can say on click we want ah, I isn't on click anything yet I guess we can just import that so import element dot events exposing on click and we want uh, to say something like uh, Scene to viewport button pressed. And then we can create that message. So there that goes, and we can handle it in the update. So when we press this button, what do we want to do? Uh, we want to, I guess we're not going to do anything to the model. Uh, we're just gonna, uh, ah, okay, maybe we need to calculate the new zoom. I think we need to do that. So, that next uh, zoom equals Uh, something and we can say model zoom level equals next zoom so let's just do zoom first and then we can center afterwards so we need to find the correct zoom level to fit it so next zoom will be something like model dot scene divided by the space available, I guess. Model dot viewport dot viewport dot width, and I guess it needs to be. We need to uh, take consider both the width and the height, but just let's do the width first. So if we make this way too big and press fit, uh, it it. Uh, it's not correct. It's not the correct zoom. Maybe it's the other way around. That looks correct. So then we have the width actually uh, fits. And then I guess we can do something like the minimum of the width and the height so if you just do height there what will happen so maybe it's not that easy to test but if we make this window smaller yeah it seems to work pretty good so the only thing left is to uh, when we do the fit we should center this so that it it comes into the center and, and I also want to do this uh, make a little bit room around it so we can do this uh, scene padding add that to the value so now when we fit it should it should have a little bit of spacing but that was maybe a bit too much so we can do 1.1 or, or it's easier to think about if we just say time 0 0.9 or something. So then if we fit, we have a little bit of space around it. So then we need to center our viewport and that can be done with the browser DOM set viewport off. 
And here's a nice example. We can just use that one, I guess. Uh, so we just say center viewport and we create that here. And that is a command message. And we, if we paste this, we know that we we can just get the viewport as is from um, viewport ID. And then we can set the same ID here. To here we actually get the info. Yeah, that's the scene and viewport what you are used to. So uh, um, it will be a bit more readable if I, but I can do it like this. So here will be the x and uh, y. And that one is there, yes. So uh, to center, we need to take, here uh, we have, uh, I guess we can extract them to viewport and scene. Uh, scene is already used. Yeah, let's just keep it then. So info dot viewport dot uh, width divided by two and minus. I think it's actually all the way around. We need to do the scene. So info dot scene dot width divided by two minus uh, the viewport half of the viewport. And does it need an integer or something? Right. Uh, center viewport, center viewport. So then when we fit, everything centers and we are happy, or nearly centers. Let's have a look. Yeah, it looks correct. If we zoom to something. Yeah, it's uh, looking good. And we can actually do this center viewport if we, whenever we uh, zoom, I guess. So when we change the zoom slider, we can center viewport. So it always centers. It's maybe maybe not not great, but I'll just keep it for now. So uh, what's nice about this now is that everything is native. So all keyboard shortcuts for scrolling works. And I, even if I if I open uh, this one in uh, a device, like an iPad or something, uh, it, it will also, when you pan with your finger, it, it also works as expected. But I see one issue when I, when I pinch to zoom, it zooms the entire site instead of the drawing. So that's something we need to look into, maybe in the next video. But I guess that's it for this video. And uh, I guess pinch to zoom might be something for the next next one.